So uh, I, I post an announcement that the um, homework 17 deadline is extended to Monday. So on Monday we'll have two homeworks due. Um, because I feel like this topic, some students feel confused. And I agree that this is the most complicated topic in the whole mechanics materials class. And of course, uh, shear stress in beam bending is always the most complicated topic in all solid mechanics class, uh, including all the future class you would take. Um, so I, I can understand your feeling. Um, and I think I'm trying my best. I, I remember that in the last class, I stopped in the class every several times to ask you guys if you have any question. And I also wait in the office hour. Um, I mean, I, I try, I'm trying to help, but uh, I really wish that before complaining, you could actually talk to me and ask me your question and, and let me help you instead of purely just complaining. Um, that's what I'm feeling. Uh, so uh, for the horizontal shear stress, uh, sorry, I think this should be horizontal shear force. This dead edge is a force term. Um, so it's basically, I can use this one as example. So let's say this is a, if this is a considered as a beam, and in the previous chapter, we talk about when there's a bending or force supply, transfer of the force supply that would cause the, uh, the normal stress in, in, in the beam. And normal stress in is in the actual direction. And its distribution on the cross section is um, linear change, zero are neutral surface, and top and bottom has max and tensile compressive. And this, more, this one is more of the, if you consider, OK, now I have the bending of this beam. And it considers this paper. There are sliding tendency between the papers. And that sliding tendency is say the whole beam is glued between each layers, between the paper. And that sliding tendency would cause the shear force between the paper. That's what you see that why it break, why it break, it separates in this direction. It separates in this direction. It's because this horizontal shear force. And it's also, as I demonstrated using this one, is because the separation between the paper is in the actual direction. In the actual direction. It's, it's shear force and shear stress. So we take a, uh, we let's say for a general force, this um, external plot of force applied on the beam, and we took a point that at C point and take a small section around the C point and we do the free ball diagram. And then we do the equilibrium equation and we can see that the horizontal shear force that H here is equal to difference of any moment of I and this term. And this is the first moment area. And you can see here, based on the equation, you can also understand that if is a pure bending problem, pure bending means bending moment is constant, then this one and this one is the same. This term equal to zero. Horizontal shear force is zero if it's pure bending situation. So basically, if back to what we first, if you check the your previous section notes, when we did pure bending derivation, we assume that there's no uh, shear stress existing uh, in pure bending situation because the bending moment is constant. There's no relative sliding of the papers when I do the bending. And also it can reflect from the equation that if the pure bending MD equal to MC is equal to zero. And now it's different is when in general situation, a lot of times bending is not pure bending in real life situation. Pure bending is simply situation in theory, but in most situation it's not pure bending. That's why we have a difference of MD minus MC. And that's why we do have the Howard and shear force. And we also talk about the definition of this Q is a, a cross-section area with cut section. Uh, so let's say if you cut from here or cut from here or cut from here, at different Y location, this cut surface is different. So the dead edge on different layer, let's say on different paper, 
I can take a very thin layer of papers or thicker or have more paper. So the sliding tendency or the horizontal shell force generated between the paper, they are different. That's why the horizontal shell force, if you took a different small section, they are different. And that is showed in the equation as this Y bar, because if you take a different section, this Y bar, the distance from the centroid of the cast section to the neutral surface is different. And also the area is different. So in this situation, let's say this is a centroid, this, is, this line passes the centroid of the cast section, and this is central of the entire section, and this becomes a Y bar. And this becomes area, right? But if I make it bigger, area change, Y bar also change. So that's why you can see here, the Q change as you, as the cut section move. So now we can see that if we're clear about A, we, if we're clear about Y bar, so we know how to cut a Q. And once we have Q, the rest part should be simple. This one, the concept of moment inertia is always about the entire section. No matter in which chapter, in which sonic classes, I moment inertia is also is always about the entire cross section. You, you don't say moment inertia about a small section of the cross section. No, it's always about the entire section. The thing change is the Q, as I said, first moment area of the cut section. So if you cut through a different section, this, this, this Q is different. This one change depends on which small section you take or like different Y, different A, right, in the equation. So this one change, but moment inertia is always about the entire section. So make it, I hope you can understand the difference here. V, it's an international force. So we learned about how to calculate international force. We know we learned about how to calculate how to find the bending moment diagram, shear force diagram throughout the beam for different external applied force. So this part we already solved uh, in the previous chapter. Delta X is purely this dimension, right? So let's say for this paper and I do bending, delta X is in this direction. Of course, this this delta X I can make it bigger or smaller. And that reflected in the example problem is the nails. When I talk about nails and the nail will, ca will carry the horizontal shear force generated on this surface, right? Because it's ba basically this nail is fixing this wood and this wood connecting these two, two pieces together. So uh, it's carry the shear force generated on this surface, horizontal, hor horizontal surface, horizontal shear force. And the delta x, delta x is this value. So of course, let's say instead of five nails, if I make four nails, the horizontal shear force carried by each nail will increase because the spacing will increase if I use four nails instead of five nails. Make sense? That's why delta h also affect the horizontal shear force. When the spacing get bigger and bigger and bigger, let's say if I use two nails, I divide half half, one nail here, one nail here, then the spacing, the space between the two nails, between the nails also increase. And the horizontal shear force carried by each single nail also increase and reflect by this dead edge. So that's the each term in this horizontal shear force calculation, dead edge. V, Q, I, X. Any question here? Any question here? And in this first example problem, um, we talk about the, uh, for this example problem, shear force is given, shear force is given, um, and the spacing, the data X is given, and the cross-section dimension they are given. And in this one, 
uh, something confused like why 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 you use this one? It's because for this nail, it carried the horizontal shear force. It's connecting this part and this part and the bottom part, right? So if this single nail is carrying the horizontal shear force between these two parts, this surface becomes the horizontal shear force, shear force that is generated and carried by this nail. So we can either use, I think some students said it very um, uh, correctly. Uh, so we can either use this one or this one. And if you know the first moment area, if you learn the more first moment area in statics, um, you know that actually the this the above this cutting surface, this area, and below the cutting surface, the magnitude of Q is the same. Why magnitude the same? It's because now you can see that this two shape, this part and this part, the difference is this vertical web. And this vertical web is symmetric about the neutral axis. What is the integration first moment area of a geometry symmetric to neutral surface? It's zero, right? Back to this one. If if the area is symmetric about neutral axis, they're like um half the y above the neutral axis, half of y below the neutral axis. And when you do the integration of this symmetric area about the neutral axis, this one equal to zero. So now you take either above this surface or below the surface. Now this part is zero. So basically it's either this one or this one. It is the same magnitude. The Q is the same magnitude. That's explained why uh, in the example, I use this one for simple calculation, but of course you can use this part and you will get the same Q magnitude. Now we solve the Q part, which is area here times uh, the Y bar is the distance between the centroid, the line past the centroid of a small section we took and the centroid of neutral surface of the entire cross section. This is 60, A times Y bar. I is always about the entire cross section, that X spacing. So we capture horizontal shear force. And that shear force is carried by this nail. And another question is about, um, I mean, here we have two nails. So does it affect our calculation? So the answer is no, because we are talking about the shear force carried by this nail, by this, by this nail. Or we can consider, let's focus on one nail here. It really doesn't matter. Here is a complete one part or, or it's connected by this part and this part and with a nail. It does not affect what is happening here, right? The force holding the shield carried by this nail is only because of this part. This nail does not affect the horizontal shield force here. And also based on our equation, based on our equation, back to the equation, a times Y bar, no matter there's a nail at the bottom or not, A is the same, Y bar is the same. That's why they don't affect each other. I can have a structure that the whole bottom part is one piece without this nail, or compare with this original problem. It does not affect what is happening here. Make sense? So that's why in the homework, some students ask like, oh, there are nails at top and they are not bottom. Does the nails at the bottom affect the nail at top? The answer is no. No matter you understand from physics or understand from the equation itself, it does not affect. And now we have the horizontal shear force and we talk about distribution. Let's focus on distribution first. So this is experiment data saying that, okay, if the B of H ratio is closer to or smaller than uh, 2.25, uh, then the maximum and the minimum shear stress is almost the same as the average stress. It's almost considered as constant distributed in this direction. So we can make assumption that for narrow rectangular cross-section, uh, narrow rectangular beam, 
is constant along the C C one C two. So basically, let's say if I bend this one, we consider this is a narrow rectangular beam. So basically, it means that in this direction, in my pencil direction, if it's the ratio B over H is smaller or equal to 0.25, we assume that the stress distribution in this direction is constant based on experiment data. And now let's focus on the stress distribution in this Y direction, in this Y direction. We did derivation, use the tau equal to VQ of IT. And uh, we have the Q, we have the I, and we get a conclusion that this expression for um, tau xy, so it's basically a function of y, so it's mean the shear, shear stress distribution in the y direction. And you can see that it's a quadratic function. And if you put the uh, magnitude shown here, it starts from zero and top and bottom back to the equation when y equal to c, this equation equal to zero, so zero at top and bottom surface. And it's maximum when y equal to zero, which is a neutral surface, it's quadratic change, right? Zero, maximum, back to zero. And of course, in the equation, we plug in y equal to zero, we get this is a maximum shear stress. And at that side in the class, this one we can use in, 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 in the test directly. Um, and in the, in the homework, there is a question asking about uh, the maximum shear stress. So maximum shear stress, as I said, you always consider taking, calculating the shear stress at the neutral surface of the entire cross section. So if you have the horizontal shear force, if you have, um, if you consider the neutral surface and divide by whatever thickness T here, you get the maximum shear stress. It's just the Q, you need to consider its area here. And T is whatever thickness at the neutral surface, right? So that is a homework problem. Uh, I can do one more example problem uh, for, for that part later. Um, so this is a shear stress. And uh, for narrow rectangular cross-section and for the i beam, as I said, this is experiment data. And we can see that for the shear stress distribution, distribution in the y direction, it's very small on this top and bottom plate. Um, very small here. And then in this vertical web, it's almost, it's not exactly constant, but it's almost the same. So as engineer, we do approximation and we approximate that, okay, the shear stress is uniformly distributed. It's constant in this uh, vertical web. And we consider this area is the one we use to calculate um, this stress and we consider this the maximum shear stress. So this is approximation for I beam. This is approximation for narrow rectangular beam, right? For more cross section geometry, you need to study more advanced solar mean class. And the example here, the first is narrow rectangular cross section and the minimum, sorry, shear force diagram is given here. So basically you need the the, the, the thing you need to figure out is the maximum magnitude of the shear force. Here is 4.5, 4.5. And for the area, well, cross section is given, right? So we use the equation directly. We use the equation here directly. For second question, it was a I beam. Um, and from, from the table, we read all the data from the I beam. And as I said, um, for the maximum magnitude of the shear force is here, 58. And A web, you can read from table, is basically um, this dimension D times this thickness. It becomes uh, A web. And whatever maximum shear force divided by this area, it becomes the maximum shear stress for IB. So any questions so far? So 
Are you all good about this topic? Professor, could you explain again, when we're calculating the maximum shear stress for an entire beam, how do we calculate the Q yeah. value? Yes, so, so this is the equation to calculate shear stress, right? So uh, of course, for maximum shear stress, if the shear force is not constant in through the beam, of course, you need to find out the maximum shear force. So this is in the actual direction, in the actual direction. So in this actual direction, you need to find out what is the maximum magnitude of shear force. So for example, in this situation, it's this one, right? So this is the V term in the actual direction, being actual direction. And for I, this is always the same. It's, it's, it's the moment inertia of the, of the entire cross section, it doesn't change. Q, we also want to find the maximum Q, first moment area. And let's say for this shape, what is the maximum Q? What's the maximum Q? This is maximum Q, right? This is maximum Q. And also you can see from the distribution, the Q, well, maximum shear stress, as I showed here, for this narrow rectangular, is quadratic change, start from zero, increase, 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 maximum and neutral surface. And then after neutral surface, decrease, 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 back to zero, symmetric about neutral surface. So uh, also from the equation-wise, um, When you take the area here, A times Y bar reaches maximum. So for finding the maximum shear stress, take the maximum V in the actual direction and on the cross section, you take what a cross section, oh, you take the area that is half of the, or how to say this? Yeah, half of the, either above or below, it's the same magnitude. And T is thickness, and since you are taking this one, so thickness is here. So basically, let's say if you have different shape, it's still you take a thickness at the neutral surface because you consider you count this cross section to half, and this is the current surface, and you consider the horizontal shear force generated here. So basically, this is a thickness you need to consider. The upper part can be any random thickness. Make sense? Did yeah, yes, thank you. So Q. For for this case, it's not the it's not of the cut section, but it's always half of it's the half. cross section. Half. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. So if I specifically ask you about the let's say if it's really a problem that's carried by nails. Nails. For this one, this if I cut can ask me about the shear force cut by nails, the cut section, you have to consider shear force generated here, right? Because this nail is connecting this piece and this piece. So it's carry the shear force generated here. But if I ask you about, okay, let's ignore the nails. What is the maximum Q or maximum horizontal shear force is here, right? If we not consider the nail, only considering what's the maximum shear, horizontal shear force generator or maximum Q is really at neutral surface because at neutral surface based on the equation, A times Y bar reached maximum. Make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. How do you know that would be the maximum Q? I think I already explained why. So why therefore Q top of the I beam Why Q top of the I beam, but I beam for stress wave term. So for this I beam, uh, I try to understand your question. I think you are talking about this one. <laughs> so as I said, this is exper experiment data. This experiment data. Of course, if you learn more advanced class, you can have some uh, software to help you solve what is your stress distribution, but it's similar like this. And for this one, if you really check the maximum shear stress, where it's located, it is at this point, right? It is at this point. And as an engineer for this type of I-beam, I use this one. 
I use this one as approximation because even though this one is a maximum point based on the shear force distribution, it's not significantly bigger than the rest point. Make sense? That's why, I mean, I use this one as approximation, approximation. If you really want to know the exact maximum, you are correct. It's here, and it's not exactly e equal to this one. It's still at a neutral surface. It's not exactly equal to this one. It should be a little bit higher. I would say like less than 5% higher. Uh, as an engineer, we do this approximation. Any other question? Let's let's check the homework. Uh, wait a second. So the first one, I'm not going to talk about this homework in detail because um, it, it's, it's your homework. Um, you do need to understand, try to understand by yourself. I just want to clear that uh, the first one is determine the largest allowable shear, vertical shear in the beam to curse my maximum shear strength in the beam. Okay. The first one is base is basically okay. If each nail can only carry shear for seventy five pounds, what is the external? What is the V? The first one is asking about the V. The allowable sh vertical shear in the beam. So it's basically um you have tau. The first one is not. It's that edge. You have that edge. Carried by each nail. For each nail, it's more than 75. And now ask what is the maximum V? So now you need to consider for this cross section. Even consider calculate that edge. What do you, what do you need to use for A, and what do you need for the Y bar? Calculating Q. So you can, of course, considering. I don't know. The two nails, top and bottom, as I said, the nails at bottom does not affect the nails at top, right? So we only consider uh, this this one first. You can consider this is area, this is the plank, uh, and this is a separate one, this is a separate one. So the two nails connect this one and this one and this one. And the cutting surface should be here and here. So you can either use this entire top area for as A to cat in Q, but make sure you understand that horizontal shear force carried by this whole this 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 area is carried by two nails. So in the end, when you consider 75, 75 is carried by a single nail. So you need to divide by two. Make sense? If you use this area as A for cat Q. Another one is that okay, now since it's symmetric, symmetric left and right. Symmetric left. Let's only focus on one nail. So basically, mean that I can choose only half of this area, and consider this is the area for A to carry in Q. And this Q, you calculate the result. It's carried by one nail, and that that actually should be smaller than seventy five. And in the end, the result is same, right? Because the area of this one is double the area of this one. You divide that one by two, or you area divided by two. Why is the same? 
So no matter you understand from which aspect, it, you get same result. You get both, you get a correct result. Make sense? Any, any question here? So this is about thinking about uh, considering the first part, consider nails, how to make sure that nail will not fail. Nail will not fail. That's that's the first question. Um, determine the largest level. Well, I will show vertical. You find this one based on data edge constraint, and then the second one is about a different thing. The corresponding maximum shear stress in the beam is not about the nails anymore. I just want whatever maximum shear stress in the beam. So where should I consider for maximum shear stress? As I said, it's always maximum at neutral surface. It's always maximum at neutral surface. So you can take this area for calculating the Q or A, right? And divide by thickness. Thickness here is equal to this one plus this one. This is a thickness. So that H divided by T, you get the maximum shear stress. You just need to realize that maximum shear stress is as the neutral surface. It's not related to the layers anymore. Or if you consider it's symmetric, same thing, I can choose this area. And now the thickness is only one How should I say? There's a thickness of this wood is, is T, only one thickness here. If we take this, the whole thing, now you have two T of the thickness of the wood plate. Make sense? Again, it's the same. You either choose double the area, you have double the T, or you, think you consider it symmetric. So you choose half of the area and half of T. Make sense? Any question? If you feel confused, you need to ask me. Otherwise, um, there's no way I can help. Uh, any question? Okay, okay, great. So, great. just to clarify, so the Q we use to calculate the largest allowable vertical shear is different from the Q that we use to cal calculate the shearing stress. Correct, you are correct. Okay. So because the plane, because the shearing plane is different. Yes, you are correct. The first one is purely considering this one. I want to make sure that nail can only carry 75 pounds. And what is the largest V can be applied, right? The second one is about the maximum shear stress. I don't consider nails or like different wood planks nailed together or anything. Just for this entire cross section, the maximum shear stress is at the neutral surface. It's a neutral surface. So one is considering this cutting surface as because it's the surface that's connected by the nail. One, the second part is this, consider this as cutting surface because this cutting surface has maximum shear stress. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Professor. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So um now second one. Nail together using nails oh bin 120. So this is the V. V is given cross-section dimension given. Allowable shear force. So this is the data edge, right? This is similar, determine the large spacing. So this one again is about data edge. It's smaller than 600. And uh, this one is V. This one, 1200 is V. And we need this S is this dimension. So this S corresponding to our equation is data X. 
So basically, if we put more nails, let's say we have more nails in, 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 in this direction, the spacing will decrease, right? And then uh, this data edge will decrease. So we can always have a value that is smaller than 600. And when we keep decreasing number of nails or increasing this S, this dash edge keep increasing, 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 increasing to a point if it's 600, we consider this a threshold value. And I want you to calculate what is data X that make it equal to 600. Make sense? So this is the data X part. And for the Q part, this one again is a nail. And as I said at first, we have top and bottom, doesn't matter. Uh, I can consider this is one piece or not one piece. The nail at the bottom does not affect whatever on top because also in terms of the equation, A times Y bar, whatever here does not affect A and Y bar here. So we focus on one nail. And focus on one nail, since this nail is connecting this part and the bottom part, right? This nail. So now you need to consider this is a cutting surface. And if this is cutting surface, what is the cutting area? Either above the cutting surface or below the cutting surface. So you either choose this this one, easier for you to calculate, or you can choose below the cutting surface, this one. Right? Either either of this area the same, uh, it should be fine. You should have the same magnitude. And if you choose the bottom one, you you can see that this vertical part is symmetric about the neutral axis. And you learned in the statics for any area that is symmetric about the neutral axis, integration y over area, the y can be positive and negative and is symmetric by neutral surface. Um, the area that above the neutral surface and area below the neutral surface, the cancel each other out, it could equal to zero. So this part equal to zero if you take the bottom part. And now if you consider be above the cutting surface and below the cutting surface, it's really comparing this one and this one. That's why Q is the same. It doesn't matter if you choose the top part or bottom part, right? So let's say in the example, in probably in the class, I took this one. So now if you know this is a cutting area, you can find the A. You can find the Y bar. You can find a Q. If you have Q, if you have the V, if you have the moment inertia, if you have the data X as unknown, and you get a value that should be smaller than 600, which is allowable of each nail, you can solve for the data, data X, which is S here. Make sense? Any question? Any question? So if no question, I assume that everybody understand. Okay. And also, um, I want to say for the for the quiz, <laughs> um, I I still receive emails saying that um because of personal reason, travel with family, uh, um health problem or um I want to say that I, I I do have dropped quiz and that is for all the personal reasons like you you have to travel with you for the family at that time um and drop quiz is for that and I can only do accommodation if let's say we have students from the marching band you, you have a letter from your director yes I can do the accommodation for that if you have a cost number time company with other class when the class number is higher than mine. Yes, I can do a combination for that. So everything that is um, based on the UF policy, I should do a combination. I would definitely do it. That's for sure. But anything related to person reason that drop quiz policies to cover that. And always some students feel like, oh, that drop quiz is for the whole class. And my person quiz uh, deserve one more extra drop in addition to that drop to the whole class. So, um, as I said, as an instructor, I cannot say which one's personal reason is more important than the other one. Uh, so I, it's really hard for me to say, okay, I will give you extra job. Uh, in, uh, so 
I mean, I understand your situation, but it's really difficult for me because I want to be fair to the whole class. I cannot just do things like because you push me more, so I can do something special for you. Uh, but for other students who, 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 some students they even did their quiz at airport. I mean, what do you want me to? Should, should I should I? They didn't request me to do some something special. So should I do it or should I ignore it? Or just because you push me more, so I can I should give you something special. Um, so I, I would say it's really difficult for me to reply to those emails. So um, and also some students still complain about like first quiz because I asked you guys to use UFID. Uh, and it's just the, the complaint, oh, the first quiz is super unfair because we didn't know what what you mean by use UFID. Again, I talked about it in the class before the quiz. And also, I mean, I can either use it in the first exam or first quiz. <laughs> you consider which one is more, um, like a factor funny grade more. And also I want to say that, yes, I consider first time use UFID in your quiz can be confusing, but as I said, I didn't give any penalty if you run, use a wrong UFID in the first quiz, or if you didn't use UFID in the first quiz, I didn't give penalty. So please don't give like, this is already two months into the semester. <laughs> I didn't give penalty. It's like the penalty comes after the first quiz. Um, but first quiz, we, I did, we didn't give penalty. So, so and here I, I truly understand that summer semester is difficult for everyone because most of you have in, internships somewhere. Most, some of you, like a lot of you need to travel with a family or something. I know it's difficult. So I'm going to do one more extra drop for the whole class, for the whole class. So two drop out of six quizzes for the whole class. And I hope that some of you may have still, I still haven't replied because I, I, I don't, I, I truly don't know how to reply. Um, so I would say that from now, if you have any personal reason, please use our dropped quiz. Please do not always say that, oh, my personal reason deserve more, something more than what you give to the whole class. Um, I need to be fair to the, everyone in the class. I need to be fair to everyone in this class. It should be, no matter what personal reason you have, it's included in these two drops. And if it's truly like UF related, you are in some student team, you need to go somewhere for competition, you need, you are in a marching band, you are athlete, you are, you have anything that one I can continue, but personal reason, please, please, please use these two drops. And please do not keep pushing me for like my my excuse deserve something special. Um everyone is special. Um <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um uh I I, I really appreciate your understandings because sometimes it's really it's not like I don't I don't want to reply email. It's really hard for me to reply. I understand your situation, but it's really hard for me to reply your email. Um so please for any reason, please use these two drops. And that's the only thing I can do for this semester. Um and let's let's continue with the new topic. New topic. So, and also I want to say that if there's anything, I really wish that you can communicate with me <laughs> first before complaining somewhere. Uh, uh, let's have a conversation first um, and to see if I can help you help your problem for concern first. Uh, so that's what I want to say. I, I, I was in the office our last time uh, on, on, on today's, today's Friday, on Wednesday class and there was no one show up. I, I'd be like, um, I knew it was confusing, but um, I really wish that you could really talk to me, come into my office or talk to me first to see if I can help you first. And for, I checked the 
uh, the quiz comments, I accidentally check. I normally don't check check it because it's just too much. If I check the comments on the every assignment, it's just too much. Yes, I we do receive a notification, but I receive like more than 20 notification per day. So that's why I don't check. If it's notification is just too much, I don't check. So I would say that if there's any grading thing that you want me to um you want me to know uh to check your grade or update your grade or you think there's a there's this this is this grading some grading mistake please do not just leave a comment there email me email me directly tell me what is on your mind and why do you feel is unfair grading or this grading mistake let me know so i can check if i i saw that it's like there are like comments between you and Tia, like back and forth, back and forth, and Tia said, hey, talk to the team. And then said, hey, I can, uh, I don't have time to go to office hour. I cannot talk to the team. And they're like, conversation back and forth. So why just, if you cannot come to my office, why don't just email me and let me know. I mean, what if I didn't check the comments? So so if there's anything on your mind, email me or come to my office. If, if you cannot come to my office hour, email me. And I always say that for my office hour, if you have time conflict, we can always schedule a time that, is, that works for you email me first we can schedule time that works for you so um that's the do not leave comments on the assignment um if there's a grading mistake email me um so this exam problem that is like help you understand uh the topic um we did in the wednesday, on wednesday um i think this is more complicated uh exam problem so we consider this is a beam and we have external force applied and uh, at the NN section, you determine the largest shear stress in that section and the shear stress at point A. So the first one, the largest shear stress in this cross section. So what is the location has a large shear stress? What location has large shear, shear stress for this one? Anyone? For part A, when you calculate Yes, the middle, the neutral surface. So the first one, we need to consider this part, right? And then the second part is about point A. So we need to consider this cutting surface. So let's calculate the first one for uh, first part. So of course we know that uh, tau equal to VQ over IT. And I is a moment inertia of the entire cross section. Let's calculate this one first. Um, so I always try to avoid uh, using parallax theory. So the for this one, we do have a way. Well, you can separate into different sections, like this section, this section, this section. Um, use parallax theorem because that this part, you do need to use parallax theorem to calculate moment inertia, you will get a correct answer. But if you want to avoid using the parallax theorem, what you can do is that this is a big rectangle minus this one, minus this one, right? So all these three was symmetric you consider they are the neutral axis, the overlap, they're the same. So in this way, we do not need to use parallel axis theorem. So first the big rectangle, um, this thing. This one, I can write it as, 1 over 12, B192, H72, H72, 
times three BH cube, right? And for the smaller one, hmm. minus two times B six H seven two cube and then what well, twelve got twelve twelve BH cube double uh the third one Uh, I don't think I can use this color. It's going to be difficult to see. Let's, let's try. So, minus. Oh, no. I need to change the color. Mm. I think blue might be better. Let's use this color. Minus two times twelve B H Q B is what is B? Um, let's say B equal to one ninety two minus minus three thickness eighteen six times three and divide by two. This B H equal to H, what is H? 72 times three minus double the thickness, 12 BH cubed. Now this is the moment inertia of the entire cross section. Um, this is equal to thirty-seven ton. Oh no, this is millimeter. Mm, I use different color because now this this part is BH cube of this one, and this part is BH cube of this one, and this blue area is BH cube of this one. Right, just in case if anybody confused why I have the equation like this, and of course you can use um the paradox axis theory. Um, so I is the same for both A and B parts. So we have the I soft, and for the A, we need VQ of IT, ITV. They are easy Q. Let's calculate Q. For neutral surface, now I need to remove all these things. So since we know that we are considering the cutting surface and neutral surface, so now we have three area actually we need to calculate. So the first one we consider this green area. So that one we have, uh, since we have both, so double two area equal to 72 times six. What is the Y bar for this green area? 
what is y bar? If you consider calculating Q for the green area, what is y bar? Seventy-two. Yes, seventy-two. The cent the line passes through the centroid of green area, and the centroid of the entire cross section. So it should be this distance. This distance should be seventy-two times seventy-two. And now the second area I use red. So this one, we have um, area 192 minus 6 times 2. And um, times 6. So this is the area of the red part, red section. What is the y bar? What is the y bar? 75, no, 73 and a half. Uh, All right, never mind. I messed so, up. So, so it should be this, 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 right here. Uh, this is, this is a line that passes through the centroid of the red area. This is a line of the neutral surface of the entire cross section. And this distance should be equal to Let's say, um, what is the easiest way to show you this one? 72 plus um, 36 minus T is 6, so minus 3. Is this correct? Are you guys confused about this one? So it's equal to this part. This is uh, half of 72, right? This is 36. And the whole top part is 72. So this part minus this part. And since this 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 black line is the centroid, passes through the centroid of the red area. So this above this centroid, uh, above here, it is half of the thickness. So this is three. That's why I have, I have minus three. So now this is a Y bar for the red area, 105. Make sense? Any confusion here? How you calculate green area of the green area? So the green area, uh, green area, this, uh, so, this one is 72, 72, and this thickness is six. Wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, yes. So this is the area of the green area, right? Did that answer your question? Uh, the part I wrote in blue. So that is the moment inertia part. This one. Okay. So this one is I forgot which part I use blue. Uh, okay. So. So this one, the B equal to one ninety two, one ninety two minus three thickness, three thickness and equal to this one plus this one divided by two. So this is B. And H is the total height, 72 times three minus two thickness. There's a thickness six here, there's a thickness here. Minus 12 equal to H. Yeah. 
another question. Mm, okay, so now let's continue with the Y bar of the red area. Uh, so I put it as 72 plus 36 minus three. So this is the Y bar. And now we have the third section, which color should I use? Blue, okay. No. For this one, this A equal to What is A? So the height is uh, 72 plus 36 minus six. This is this dimension times um, thickness, this is the area. And Y bar, what is Y bar here? Anyone? 72 over two? This one? Um, so Y bar. It's not exactly because because you do need to consider there's, there's a small thickness here that's not including the red air blue area, right? 51? Uh yes, yes, 51. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So so let's 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 check. Uh neutral surface, I already put it there. And just the line that passed centroid of the blue area, let's put it as here. So basically, it's equal to um, we already have actually we already have a height. Hmm? My pencil doesn't work. Oh no! I need to wait. Sorry, my, my pencil doesn't work. Um, hmm. Would you just subtract six from 72 because T equals six. So once you get sixty six over two, it equals y bar. Yes, but 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 the, the blue area is not exactly seventy two. Uh, let me let me try to figure out how to make make my pencil work first. Uh, anybody know how to? I don't know. It just suddenly stopped working. Uh, anyone can help? I think it happened to me once. Um, if you go to settings and into Apple Pencil, and then you put it there where it charges, sometimes yeah, I, it I, just reconnects. Yeah, I, I, I put it on the side of the iPad charging now, but it doesn't show anything. Normally, it will show like if 0% battery or something, but it doesn't show anything. Um, yes. Um, try going to settings, and in settings, you go to Apple Pencil. Oh, That's okay. what I did one time, and it worked. Okay, let me, let me do it again. Uh, let's do that and work. Okay. Let me try to. Um... So go to me. Yes, and then you scroll down until you see Apple Pencil. Okay, wait a second. Okay, Apple Pencil, and then. 
then what should what should I do? And then if you if you connect it to the site, does it connect or no? It does not show anything. Um, it does not show anything. This is. Yeah. Um, give me one minute. I need to restart my iPad. I need to restart my iPad. Mm. No. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, it works now. Sorry. Uh let's let's share my screen again. Okay, um, sorry about that. So now we have uh, for this y bar, it should be equal to, so we have uh, 36 and plus 72. So this is the total height plus the red area thickness. So I need to minus the thickness and then divide by two. And now this is the Y bar. So, oh no, yeah, yes, yes. So it should be equal to 51. I think one string got it right. Um, so that's right here. So 
why are you dividing it by two? Because because uh, uh, this part is this height, right? And I want the distance between the neutral the path the line passes the neutral axis of the blue area to the neutral axis of the entire cross section. I I want this one. This is the y bar. It's Thank half. You. Yeah. So we have thirty six seventy two minus the thickness. Um, of the red area divided by two. So this is a y bar. So this is equal to um, two oh six point eight two. So maximum equal to VQ of IT. So just plug in the numbers because we basically solved everything. Um, so V25 shear force, oh no, 125, sorry, 125, um, Q, 206.82. And since it's millimeter and this, uh, let's use Newton and meter. Um, ten to negative three. I thirty-seven point seven seven. Ten to six again. Convert to meter. T thickness six millimeter. Now this is since we use Newton and meter, so the final unit of Pascal. So this is a uh, part A. Part B actually once we capture part A, part B is easier because now I can finish very quick. Um, Part B, since we need to cal calculate um, the shear stress at point A, so we only need the green area and the red area, right? We just ignore this blue area and everything is fine. So for calculating the Q, um, we only need the green area and a red area. So we can use the thing we already calculated in the first step. And this one is equal to 175. Point 0.6, 10 to third millimeter. And uh, for the shear stress, the only thing changed the Q. So this 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 also to save some time. <laughs> uh, copy. So the shear stress at point A. The only thing I need to change is the Q part. Q. This is 175.6. And V, I, T, they are the same. The only difference is Q. So this is equal to 96 point, oh no. I should, I don't know. I, I don't have a final answer. I'll, I'll calculate it. <laughs> um, there's something wrong in my calculation. So, um, I I will use my calculator because in this problem I cannot say it's always thickness, but in this problem at the neutral surface and at a point the same thickness. That's why we use six. No matter if you take at here or here, it the t equal to six, right? So it's not always thickness of the material, but I mean 
You consider this one and this one is the same. Uh, any other question? Uh, for this calculation, I will show you in the last class, but it doesn't matter. Um, I don't have the calculated results now. Any question? So uh, if no question, we are done for the class today. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, sorry for the pencil problem during the class. Um, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. You too. Thank you. Show the rest, last part A, part A, part, part A, part A. Here? Okay. Okay, I will change this Zoom link to the office of Zoom link. So if you have any question, you can come to my office. Thank you.